Welcome to today's BioBrief discussing guided tissue regeneration in the aesthetic zone. My name is Dr. Bassam Kinaya. I'm currently in private practice full-time and part-time with the University of Detroit Mercy as the Associate Director of the Periodontics Program. The situation. We have a 34-year-old healthy male presented with increased spacing between the maxillary left central and lateral incisors. The clinical examination showed deep probing depth between teeth number 9 and 10. The CT scan showed vertical bone loss between those two teeth, 9 and 10, wrapping all the way around the palatal surfaces. Different treatment options were discussed, and we agreed on doing a guided tissue regeneration to be able to stabilize and rebuild the lost bone to maintain the dentition for the patient. If we take a look at the risk profile, the patient has a low smile line, but if we take a look at the soft tissue, we have primarily blunted papilla, almost highly scalloped, medium periodontal phenotype. The teeth are more rectangular in shape, and we do have some inflammation present in the area. If we look at the bone loss, it is exceeding the 7 millimeter mark, and we have a compromised dentition for number 9 and 10 because of that vertical, wide, horizontal, bone defect. So the patient falls more so within the medium to high risk category. When we discussed the treatment plan for a GTR, our goal was to correct the vertical bone loss to be able to rebuild the bone, to rebuild the periodontal apparatus between 9 and 10, to be able to save the dentition. So with our approach, I performed primarily cellular incision on teeth number 9 and 10 with pericrystal incision on the palatal surface to be able to push the papilla, doing the papilla preservation technique, similar to the tacky technique, to push that papilla to the facial, so it is away from the vertical bone loss to be able to build the bone. Looking at the bony defect itself, you can appreciate that the coronal one-third of the bony defect, there's complete bone loss through and through defect. Well, if you look at the apical part of the defect, you almost have a one or two bone, bony wall defects. The area was thoroughly debrided after the flap reflection, and we can see there's appreciate there's a very wide defect measured at least about three to four millimeters in width, and at least about seven to eight millimeters in depth in the area. So the allograft will allow us to be right next to the root cementum to have osseoinductive properties to build the bone in the region, while the xenograft from the valomix will allow us to be layered as a second layer externally on top of the allograft to be able to maintain the space so there's no collapse in that region. You can see the allograft is a place internally, right, right between number 9 and 10, but also wrapping on the palatal surfaces, while this xenograft is layered as a second layer externally to maintain the space. And that the advantage of using the Valomix material for such large and deep bony defect. Of course, we're going to be using a collagen membrane to cover the bone that we have just added to be able to protect it. The internal part of the papilla, we still have some granulomatous tissue that we were able to do a partial thickness to fillet it to be able to cover the bone graft and get that primary closure. So looking at the outcomes, the healing at two, four weeks, and six months, and currently we also have a one-year follow-up we do have a clinically stable periodontium. The tissue is more pinkish in color with higher papillary fill between number nine and 10. Looking at the probing depth, we have went down from seven to eight millimeters down to approximately three millimeter probing depth to indicate good health with no inflammation present. So the keys to success for this biobreed for the GTR for this patient was the use of collagen membrane with the Valomix together to prevent against epithelial down growth during the GTR procedure, the minimally invasive flap design, and the instruments with the microsurgical plate were key to preserve the remaining tissue to be able to allow access for good bone and membrane adaptation. And finally, the use of monofilaments is key to get primary closure with minimal plaque in the area. We need to maintain the patient in a good periodontal maintenance recall program 
every three months to continue to make sure there is no relapse in any treatment that we do. Thank you again for being with us today. My name is Bassam Kinaya, and it's a pleasure to share this bio brief with you.